What's going on everyone? So in this video, I'm going to tell you the five different things you're going to need if you want to start saltwater fishing. What's going on everyone? So if you don't already know, my name is Brent Shermer and welcome to my channel. I like to post a lot of different fishing videos and fishing tips, so if any of that interests you, make sure you subscribe. In today's video, I wanted to give a little bit of information on someone that's just starting off with saltwater fishing that has nothing and is just looking for some information. So how I'm gonna do this video is I'm gonna break it down into the five essential parts you're gonna need to start off with saltwater fishing. The first part that's a very essential part is you need to make sure that you buy a fishing license before you start any of this. By law, you need to have a fishing license if you're fishing in really any state in the United States. And the money that's generated through the sales of the fishing licenses are used to help fund conservation efforts. So it's not just something that you have to buy so you don't get a ticket when you get stopped by like FWC or the sheriff or something. It helps fund conservation efforts for fisheries management so our fish populations can be strong up into the future. So make sure that you get your fishing license before you head out fishing. So you can buy these fishing licenses online if you really wanted to. I'll have a link down at the bottom. FWC has like some links that you can follow to purchase a license online. You can get either a resident, non-resident for like a couple days. You could get like a year. You could even get like a lifetime one if you don't want to ever worry about it again. Or you could go to like Walmart or some of these tackle shops, they also sell fishing licenses there. Just make sure that you pick one up before you head out on the water. The second thing you're really gonna need is a good rod and reel with some good line on it. I do probably 95% of my fishing using spinning reels. Unless I'm offshore, then I'll use a conventional, but most of the time I'm using spinning reels and inshore fishing it's pretty much essential. There's so many different size reels that you can get with different numbers of drag or whatever you need, but if you're just looking for something to get you out on the water and get you out fishing for inshore fishing around here in Florida or Tampa Bay or anything, I think the perfect size spinning reel is a 4,000 size reel. It's not too big where if you catch some smaller like trout or redfish or anything, that's not like overpowering to the point where it's not fun but it's still got enough drag and enough line capacity where it could handle some of those bigger redfish and snook. If you're just starting out with fishing and you're really just trying to buy like your first rod and reel, you really do not need to spend a couple hundred dollars on a good setup. As far as 4,000 size reels that I have, I have a Shimano Stratic CI4 and this one will cost you a couple hundred dollars and it's a great reel, great drag, everything, I love it but then again, you don't really want to spend a couple hundred dollars, especially if you're first starting up. So this reel right here is what I would recommend if you're looking for something. This is a Shimano Sienna 4000, and this reel brand new will cost you about $30. So it's a, not gonna break your bank at all. It's a pretty reliable reel. Like I've caught some fish on it. I'm excited to see what else I can catch on it. And it's definitely what I would recommend if you're first starting out. This size, everything. On this reel, I have it spooled up with about 200 yards of 20 pound braid. And I think that's perfect because I'm pretty sure the drag on here is about 17 pounds maxed out. So 20 pound braid is perfect and that's great for inshore fishing around here. As far as a rod that you're gonna need, it's kind of the same situation where you don't really need to spend hundreds of dollars for starting off. So right now I have two rods right here. This rod right here is a St. Croix Avid Inshore. It is the seven foot light power. And honestly, I would recommend maybe going a medium light if you're going with a 4,000 size reel. And these rods are amazing. But then again, it will cost you a couple hundred dollars. So if you're really not trying to break the bank at all, I would recommend getting something a little bit cheaper like this rod right here. I went to, let me put that over there and not try and hit everything. I went to Bass Pro Shops and I picked up this two-piece ugly stick rod. This is the ugly stick elite, duh, duh, duh. it's seven foot medium action. This is a perfect travel rod and if I remember correctly, I think this cost me about 50 bucks at Bass Pro Shop. So combine this with the Sienna and you're only looking at about an $80 combo. And you can catch some really nice fish. I've gone down to Key West and I've caught 15, 20 pound tarpon on this. So 
you really don't need to break the bank. And like I said, with these 4,000 size reels, about a seven foot rod, that's medium, medium light power, is perfect for these setups. So the third thing I wanna talk about in this video is what lures and bait you're gonna to wanna to use. So I know there's hundreds of different lures that you see when you go to these tackle shops and you may get confused on which ones you wanna buy. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna give you my top four, three, four, lures that I would recommend that you pick up and are great beginner lures. So I'm gonna do this as I'm gonna start from the top of the water column and move my way down. So the first lure I'm gonna recommend is a top water lure right here. This is a Zara Spook. This is a classic top water walk the dog kind of lure and all it is is you cast it out and you twitch it back and it will keep darting back and forth on top of the water doing this erratic movement and the fish will go crazy after it. So the second lure I'd recommend is kind of a mid-water twitch bait and that's the mirror lure Miradine right here. This is a classic lure that you see a lot of people fishing with around here in Tampa Bay and this thing will kill the trout, redfish, and snook. So it's kind of the same movement as when you're using the, the Zero Spook. So what you want to do is you cast it out and this lure will sink a couple inches, maybe a foot, depending on how long you let it sink for under the water. And all you do is you reel and twitch it back and it will dart back and forth in the water looking like a little injured greenback or some sort of bait fish. And the fish love this thing. So the third lure I want to talk about is probably my favorite lure as of lately if you've watched all my older videos. And that is the DOA Cal on a 1 8 ounce jig head. So this lure, all it is, is you got a soft plastic body with a nice paddle tail on the back and a jig head and you cast it out and you, you can work it a bunch of different ways. You can cast it out and kind of jig it off of the bottom and this tail will flicker as you're jigging it. You can do a nice slow steady retrieve and this tail will just flutter in the water like that. Or you could kind of like burn it back, especially if the fish are really fired up and it'll kind of skip on the surface a little bit. But it is a great all around lure. You, can, you don't have to use a 1 8 ounce jig head. You can use a quarter ounce if you want, if you're fishing a little bit deeper water and it comes in a bunch of different colors. The only thing I would recommend is these lures are pretty soft and they do tear easily, especially with uh, puffer fish and pinfish or like trout with the teeth and everything. So I would recommend trying to buy a good amount of these lures and they do sell them in like bulk 50 packs if you wanna check that out. I'll have it all linked down below. So the fourth lure I wanna talk about is the DOA shrimp. So the way that I like to work this lure is I like to cast it out and jig it off the bottom so it's kind of darting through the grass, kind of looking like a, a shrimp that's escaping something that was trying to eat it. And it's a very easy lure to work. I try to pick the easiest lures for you guys to pick up and the ones that will catch you the fish. And this one right here might be the most time tested one and you can catch all sorts of fish on this lure. So as far as live bait, by far the most popular option is live shrimp. Live shrimp will pretty much catch you any species of fish inshore. You can pretty much buy live shrimp from any bait store in your area and what I would recommend you do is you pick up a couple dozen shrimp and you want to make sure you either have a bait bucket with holes in it that you can put the bucket in the water when you get out fishing or you have a bucket with an aerator on it to keep your shrimp alive for a long time. So I pretty much only use circle hooks, especially when I'm using live bait. I honestly couldn't even tell you last time I used a J hook. And when I'm using uh, live shrimp, my go-to circle hook is a two or a three O Gamagatsu circle hook. So it's a perfect size where it's not really gonna weigh down your shrimp at all, so it's gonna still be able to print or swim freely, but it's still enough hook so you can still manhandle some of these fish that are gonna eat it. When you're fishing either lures or live bait, you wanna make sure that you're using a stretch of fluorocarbon leader attached to it. Fluorocarbon, all it does is it really disappears in the water, so the fish don't see the line at all, they won't spook, and you'll get a lot more bites that way. It's also nice abrasion resistance if you're fishing around any structure, like some rocks, a jetty, mangroves, or anything like that. You can buy fluorocarbon anywhere from like six pound tests up to like 200, so what I'd recommend if you're first starting off, a good size for inshore fishing just all around is right here. This is 25 pound fluorocarbon. This is perfect for inshore species around here. 
it's not too heavy where you're gonna spook some of these smaller fish and it's still heavy enough where you could catch some of these bigger fish that are gonna eat. So the fourth thing I really wanna talk about is other terminal tackle that you're gonna need. Uh, the main thing is a pair of pliers here, like right here. You want a good pair of pliers that have a good pair of cutters on them too. Because sometimes even the best of us will catch some catfish or something and we don't really want to get stuck or really grab them at all. So a good pair of pliers will help get the hooks out even if the fish swallow it or anything. And this pair of cutters will save your teeth and make your dentist very happy that you're not biting your fishing line to cut it. Uh, another important terminal tackle that you're going to need that I haven't discussed yet is some bobbers. And especially when you're using a live bait, that's pretty much the only time you'd use a bobber. Unless you're using a popping cork with some jigs or anything, but we can save that for another video. Bobbers are really essential for keeping your bait within the strike zone and not having it fluctuate too deep or too shallow. So. You're going to want to pick up a variety of sizes of bobbers too, depending on your bait. You can use a, some smaller smaller uh, bobbers if you're just using shrimp or if you want to move up and try and use like some pinfish or something, then you would need a bigger bobber for that. Some other terminal tackle that you're going to need is some weights, especially split shots, which are the super easy weight, for, especially if you're just starting out, that's what I would recommend you pick up. And split shots, if you don't know what those are, are just small little weights right here that you clip on to your to your line and you just use a pair of pliers to pinch it on and it'll stick to your line. And it's a great way to quickly add more weight without having to cut your line and retie everything. And it's very effective, I still use all these. So I'd recommend that you pick some of those up as well. So the fifth and final thing that you're gonna need to know before you head out fishing is where you need to go fishing. This is very overlooked part of all this that is honestly kind of simple if you really put some time into it. So what I recommend that you do if you don't know where to go at all or anything is to go to these local bait shops and tackle shops and just talk to the people that work there, or people that come in and just kind of get some information that way. Just say, hey, I'm looking to catch redfish. I'm looking to catch trout and I was just wondering if you could give any information. They may not tell you exactly where to go, that's kind of a fishing thing, no one wants to tell you their spots, but they might give you a better idea on types of locations that you should be looking for. Another thing you can do is do a little bit of research. You can Google it, maybe look at some like Facebook groups, like fishing groups in that area, see like what they're talking about, what they're catching. Or you can just look up fishing reports on Google and there's a ton of them, especially at, like pretty much anywhere that you look, there's gonna be some fishing reports for that area that will give you some information on what's biting and where they're biting. So the third way you can find some spots is to go out and explore on your own. It can be a very rewarding way to find a new spot, and, but you gotta be able to put the time and effort into doing it. You're gonna have a lot of days where you're going out and exploring and you don't catch anything, you don't see any fish, but it just helps you gain more knowledge and know where to look next time. Thank you guys for watching this video. I hope you guys learned something in here and now you feel a little bit more prepared to go out there and start saltwater fishing. If you guys like this video, make sure to give it a thumbs up. That would really mean a lot to me. If you want to see more videos like this, make sure you subscribe and I will see you guys next time.